So in your opinion, what makes a good LED grill light? Uh, well, one thing I'll say is that nowadays there are some pretty crappy lights that still get surprisingly good results uh, just because they manage to get the spectrum and the diodes right. So uh, I'm, I don't want to discriminate too much against any particular light, but generally what makes a good light is that a good manufacturer, number one, has a years long track record of making them and they have high quality diodes, either uh, Samsung or Osram, and they'll tell you, you know, which ones. Uh, beyond that, you want a, a good grow light that has a minimum number of components, uh, because as we discussed earlier, there's fail safes uh, on those kind of spots. Nowadays, comp uh, or the manufacturers have gotten good about that. And you want a light that dissipates heat very well, and you also want it to come with as many features as possible. Now, for LED lights, features means, number one, it's properly waterproofed, uh, which some of the less expensive lights might not be, uh, but uh, they, they come with waterproof designations that you can look up to make sure that they're there. And uh, they do have to come with some basic functionality. The big one is dimming. And it used to be that uh, there was no dimming, then there was dimming done with a screwdriver, uh, if you do it right. And nowadays you kind of should expect uh, a proper dimming knob on an LED light. And you also want them to uh, have a, a daisy chain capability so you can tie a whole bunch of them together. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it entails. Um, I should note though, like I said, you can get some amazing results out of lights that aren't impressive in many other ways. And spending a thousand bucks in a light um, and hanging it wrong is pointless. And more often than not, it's not that a person gets a bad light because there's so many good lights on the market, it's that they get a good light and they hang it incorrectly. So for example, when dealing with LED lights versus HID, you have to always bear in mind how much closer an LED light has to be to the canopy in order to get the same kind of light intensity uh, that an HID will give you from a couple feet further away. I think one thing that I would add that you hadn't mentioned is the light spread across the footprint. There's still some LED lights out there that have the light focused towards the dead center of the footprint and then it really drops off as you get to those outer edges. You know, I'm talking like a thousand PPFD dead center, but it drops down to like 200 on the outer edges. A lot of these companies are making the bar style grow lights these days, which really helps spread that light evenly across the footprint. So that's one of the things that I personally look for that I personally think makes a good grow light these days. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that sentiment. Uh, definitely the weakness that LED lights have had in the past was this kind of light spread concentration problem, and it was especially bad a number of years ago. And then this uh, once fanless LEDs took off and you could have a bar type light, uh, the bar lights just exploded. And now every manufacturer has a bar light going on and they are really good they really do get the light spread even um even if you use an inexpensive thing like uh the fc series by mars hydro one of their lights those don't cost an awful lot but because of the way they're designed and they're so wide you get excellent coverage right at the corners so this clip is brought to you by ac infinity use discount code mr grow at 15 to save on any of their products Thank you.